all right so what's up guys welcome back to another video this video is going to be installing this high pressure fuel pump along with all the other components that quicker racing component sells such as the ptfe lines the ethanol content sensor that is paired with their made in-house um gauge pod holder this is going to sit in the uh in the vent on top of the dash and is gonna house this Innovate gauge Sorry, This is all messy up and I didn't clean it all up. But he also hooked me up with a Hitachi housing with a AutoTech uh, piston in it. So that's gonna be, or that's gonna allow me to run E40. Um, hooked me up with four cool stickers. So the hardest part of this install is gonna be getting this wire through the firewall. I know it is. This is not gonna be hard. This is not gonna be hard putting a sticker on the car ain't gonna be hard this isn't gonna be hard this i know is the hardest part about doing this is pushing that wire through the firewall i had to do it with <coughs> the methanol um gauge thing that shows you it's like a control you know what i'm saying um it was a pain so i know this isn't gonna be fun but he has royally hooked me up with all this stuff, so I'm very excited to shoot this video and get this little install done and see how the car run on ethanol. Just want to pop in here and say, if you use the code SLOWA6 at checkout, you will receive a free t-shirt with the purchase of a fuel line kit from Quicker using the code SLOWA6 with two W's. There is a link in the bio that will take you directly to their website with the code already applied. All right, so first thing we need to recognize is where the high pressure fuel pump is. Um, that is going to be this little John right here. That is, uh, the whole housing is going to be replaced and where his kit and lines come in is this line along the valve cover that snakes over the intake tube to right chunk. So, and also the, the sensor is going to mount pretty much right where, uh, right where that is. Um, so we're going to do is start disassembling all this and I'm not going to shoot this video showing the whole install of the high pressure fuel pump because that's not what he sells and there's plenty of videos on that on youtube i mean i'm probably going to time lapse it but and talk through it it's not going to be like a full in-depth detailed video basically you just pull this one off and put the new one on um what i am going to be showcasing is how all of his components work um on the 3ot platforms and also he has a bunch of stuff for 4ot stuff too so if superchargers ain't your thing he's got 4ot so stuff we're in the process of letting the car run out of gas all you have to do is pull the 25 amp fuse on the uh, driver fuel side or on the fuse box on the driver side so pretty much at any moment the the car will cut itself off all right so car just cut itself off go in there cut the car off shut the door and now there should be no pressure there's still gonna be a little bit of fuel so you need to kind of put some rags under here to to catch it but that's normal so now there should be no pressure in those lines or minimum pressure. All right, so we got this, uh, the fuel line that goes across here, this off. We had to snug this, oh, this little fuel disconnect line up in there. I just wanna stop here and say there will be a link in the description for where you can buy the same fuel disconnect line kit. Um, just pop it off, now we're about to pull the pump off. pumps off that's not focus whatever um got all the lines off so now we're going to start trying to figure out where the uh sensor mounts and get the uh the ptfe lines ran from here over to uh to the fuel pump try to do them all nice i don't want to run it over top of the thing like it was before so Right, guys so as you just saw got the high pressure fuel pump installed got this little line put back together i still need to put one more bolt up there um got all the electrical connections on the bottom done and this is the an line that he uh he supplied already on the fuel pump um so i guess if you're putting his uh ptfe lines on your pre-existing fuel pump to add the, the ethanol sensor you would have to pull this fitting out of your high pressure fuel pump and reinstall this an line 
I've been talking with him about the option of doing the 45 degree or the 90 degree. This is the 90 degree um, A in turn. So this is gonna tuck it out the way of the intake behind and then back through this way to the valve cover um, instead of running it up and over like the factory one does over the intake tube, which I think is hideous. Um, so we're getting that situated now. <clears throat> you gotta remember guys, this is literally the first one on a 3OT that's not a shop car, I'm 99% sure. So me and Nick have been talking this whole install, he's been walking me through it, making sure everything's perfect. So <clears throat> next thing is get the uh, get the line from this A in line to connect to the the sensor that goes here and then from this, this part of the sensor to here. So we're gonna snake it back and around to, uh, to get it out of the way of the intake. So just a little update here. Um, mounted the, uh, got the sensor mounted, made a little custom bracket out of some ABS. Um, so these are not offered through um, quicker, just the sensor is. Um, we're getting something worked out to have one of these as like everything you need to do this, like a, a simple solution. Um, this was just kind of like some trial and error stuff. And we had another little complication that uh, that is definitely getting worked out as we speak. So the problem we ran into is this line. <coughs> well, let me clarify. The problem we ran into was he designed this kit off of a 4OT. Um, it's meant to work with 3OT stuff too. But as you can see, if this, this line went here, we have entirely too much line. So... He is overnighting me some parts to get a uh, a smaller hose here with the 90 degrees to uh, throw it right to the uh, to the sensor. Um, <clears throat> another huge shout out to him. I know I've said this like seven times, but overnighting parts, trying to make everything perfect. Um, like I said, this is the first kit that's going on this car. So I knew there was going to be some troubles. So we're getting them worked out. So when you go to buy it, everything is perfect. So another thing I did, I went ahead and ran this wire, tucked it along the methanol line back up one of the fuel lines <coughs> tucked it through here and i just went ahead and spliced it into this harness so i only have one harness going through here or not harness little loom thing um and then i'm gonna wire it somewhere up here to run it over there so <coughs> what i'm working on now is pulling all this crap out the way to get uh to be able to push the push the wire through the firewall so what you need to do to do that is pull the windshield washer reservoir and the ecu and just get this fuse box like up and out of the way so you can see the see the harness that's right there <clears throat> but so far everything's been going good i've already got this 90 degree fitting right there um that's going to be tucked here i can go ahead and pretty much hook this one up though sorry hold on that's going shit it's going to be kind of snake behind there like that and then ran to this hose or to the sensor um, we got to tuck it out of the way back here. We got to do some clearance stuff for uh, for the intake. But other than that, I think it's going to be real simple, real clean. Um, super excited. And I can also show you. I'm pretty sure I left this in the car. Yeah, I did. Um, that is how the gauge is going to look. It's not 100% mounted in yet. Um, but I think it looks perfect. I've got the P3 gauge, I've got my snow gauge, and then I've got this uh, Innovate gauge that's going to display fuel temperature as well as fuel, um, uh, the E content in the fuel, so I can make sure it's safe when I'm running on an E40 file. Um, so, I'm going to get a little more work done and uh, update you then. A little tip when you're pulling this fuse box back. Um, normally, I just take a zip tie, put it through that hole, and then zip tie it around the uh, little bar there. And that gives you enough access to uh, to see what you're working with. Let's see if this will focus. Here we go. Um, I'm about to pull this electrical tape off where I've, uh, I've already been in here once running methanol stuff. But we're going to push this wire through. All right, so all I got to do is put that grommet back around the, uh, the metal part of the firewall there. I've already got the wires ran through. And I've already got the wires ran through here up to where I want it. Um, we are going to have to drill a hole up here. Um, just to be able to get these wires through, just drill a hole in the, um, hang on, put this down, down in here, you know what I'm saying? Um, just to be able to get the wires for the gauge through, but I've got this wire where I want it, all that stuff for the P3 gauge and the methanol stuff, but I also went ahead and wire loomed <coughs> all the wire right there, you see the wire loom all the way over, all the way through here, this is the wire loom for the pump for the methanol system, but I tied it in 
right there. So it runs down this fuel line, up this methanol line, connects around this sensor to this sensor. So made a little bit of progress. All right, so you can tell I got the hole drilled. Now it's uh, it's time to push. So you can see from this view. Yeah, you got it again. Uh, it's time to push these wires through and go ahead and start getting everything connected up and get this gauge completely in. All right, so as you saw, the uh, the gauge and the vent is now uh, is mounted in, um, and you saw I used some tape to uh some black electrical tape to make sure the gauge um is snug and flush in there um got this yeah so getting a little i had to work something out here um it's going to be fixed for previous or next orders but since this is literally one of the first um ran into some issues uh and pulled one of the wires out of the uh the fancy little connector here so I had to, uh, I had to make it work, so, yours will not do this, I promise, this was, uh, first trial and error, so, needless to say, it was an easy fix, so, um, but, now it's the only thing that's left to do is just get power to it and, uh, a ground, so, that's through, now I just need to, um, tidy all this up in here, put everything back how it was, and should be getting close to wrapping it up, so, as a first, kit i'm very impressed so far everything's fitting good um we had the exact amount of wire needed to run it through and get it to where it needs to be where the gauge is but oh um i think the gauge looks sweet it's really blurry it's no light in here but doing a little bit of wiring so i'll update you here i guess in a few days all right, so fuel line is uh, it's in 100%. We had to shorten this uh, a good deal to get it to fit, but now all that's left is run this other one that I just took out last night. Um, put the other O2 in and should crank. I gotta plug the sensor back in. We can do that right. Now. So this is just a little mock-up fit, make sure everything's fitting. Got the intake uh, tube back on. As you can see, there's one A in fitting there. Tuck behind the, uh, the intake tube over to the sensor sorry it's kind of blown out a little bit and then the little baby line here um i just tested in the car to make sure let's cut this off to make sure the gauge had so if you cut the car on now it's showing e11 code just because there's no fuel flowing through right now um but we got gauge power that should go off in a second should go off in a second uh oh, I have this wired kind of ghetto here to the uh, brake light switch. So technically it's not supposed to be on when the car is not on. It should go away once the car decides it wants to cut itself off. But <clears throat> I'll check it here in a second. But all I got to do now is tighten the rest of these AN lines. And I was unsuccessful with the O2s, by the way. If you have headers on a 3OT, you, it's on a not a 3OT on an A6 it's not possible to get the rear two in it, it, it is not possible so yeah as you can see this right here I mean it's very clean super nice everything looks very professional um I still need to pull the bracket off and make a couple more and send to them but looks pretty sweet. so we're about to install the uh high pressure fuel pump again and we need to let it prime a couple times so I'm gonna prime it once and then go check and see if we got any pressure Cycle the ignition, shut the door. Check and see if we puke and fuel anywhere. 
not looking like it. Sorry, the camera's all over the place right now. Let me, let me do this little number right here. Nope. Hang on. There we go. Fuel pump cycle once. Floor's a mess from wire and stuff, but. Sounds like something's wanting to work up here. Mm, double checking all that. Sorry, I'm using my phone as a light as well. Um, everything looking good so far. And I showed this earlier, but dang, that looks sick. Everything's all nice and tucked. And if you're doing this install, please, please double and triple check all the AN connections as well as make sure the fuel pump has primed at least three to four times before starting the car. If you do this without checking the AN stuff and there's a leak, you will spray fuel everywhere thank goodness i checked everything made sure everything was correct and we didn't have an issue we all right so you just saw the car running but now the car doesn't run anymore so um we went to go tune the trans the other night and the trans tune got accepted and the ecu got accepted like to the computer um the problem was though, it was still shifting at stock shift points, 6,200, but it was revving over 6,200 in neutral. So um, the only issue that we think it could have now is the rear O2s not being in. And I was unsuccessful in getting the uh, 90 degree extensions in on the passenger side, just will not fit. So <clears throat> the solution we came up with was just put the O2 extensions in farther downstream. So. I've got the downpipes off. I've got them marked where I'm going to weld the bung in. So one thing that's left to do now is get these O2s in here. So the car should be able to run properly then. And uh, we'll go shoot for a 10. So I'm trying to make an event on Wednesday. Today is a Monday. The harness extensions aren't supposed to be here till Wednesday. So we're going to be kind of pressed for time. If I can't make the event, it's not that big of a deal. But <clears throat> it's not an event. It's actually just test and tune. The bigger event is on the 13th. Today is the 29th. Well, the first, I guess. So <clears throat> we're uh, we're getting it figured out, but that has nothing to do with this video. You'll see that in the other videos. Um, this video is about this wonderful thing. So everything's installed. Everything works perfectly how it should. Um, here's final product. Again, all buttoned up. Uh, I shortened the, the size of... The, uh, the bracket, I sent him four brackets out. He's going to get them 3D scanned um, so he can uh, get them 3D printed. So, yeah. Here's one more little plug for the video. If you like this awesome shirt that I'm wearing, if you buy a fuel line kit from him, you will get a free t-shirt. So, if you use my code. So, it's, the code is SLOWA6. The link to it will be in the bio. If you, uh, if you just click on the link, it will directly take you to... It will already set it up for you on the website, if that makes sense. Um... That is only for limited time, so if you're watching this video like three years from now, probably not going to work. <laughs> um, just what we said is limited time while supplies last, so not a definite number on them. But, but I'm in the video off here, so if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, follow me on Instagram, slowly 6 2 ws um, Also, give Quicker a follow, which is just at Quicker on, uh, on Instagram, so I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Um, I'll link everything down in the description, though. But if you enjoyed, thank you for watching. See you later.